You might be here today and you're feeling devastated. You feel things just aren't working out the way you think that they should have worked out. It doesn't look like things are going to happen the way that your dreams thought that they were going to go. I'm going to tell you something here this morning. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. God is on our side. If God is for us, who can it be against us? We need to rise up and realize something. That God has destined us to victory. God has called us to succeed. God has called us to be the winner and not the loser. Have you read the end of the book yet? We win. Amen. We go through things in life. But the problem is we start looking at the things that we are in as if that's the final resting place. If that's the place where we have to pitch a tent and live for the rest of our lives. Hey, we're just pilgrims and strangers passing through and this too shall pass. Yeah. Yeah. Your business will not fail. Your marriage will not fail. Hallelujah, your church will not fail. Praise God, your health will not fail. Brother John, the statement didn't stop there. 
In the world you shall have trouble. Yes. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. When our faith is attached to Jesus Christ, His word, and His promises, He's going to make sure that we don't stay in that place of defeat. We're not going to stay in that place of give up. We're going to stay in that place of having our heart torn out. We're going to get up, move on, go forward, and find ourselves in a place of blessing and victory and promise. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Never saw this so real in my life than when I was just a young Christian. You know, we all have treasures in this life. Especially our children. And there was a very special couple of friends of ours. They're pastors in Santa Rosa, California today. Preaching somewhere over there. When we grew up in church together, our home church, they, we met them for the very first time. That little boy, his name was Willie. Two years old. Mexican family. This kid was a live wire. I mean, he was, uh, he would give any of our kids the run for their money. I just got to tell you that right now. <laughs> Willie uh, was outside one day playing, and they had a goat tied up out in the yard. And the parents were in the house, and had lost track of what was going on outside, and that goat, tied to a chain, wrapped that chain around Willie's neck and choked that baby unconscious. We were at the hospital with Rob and Coco on that day. Their lives were devastated, but they were not defeated. Amen. We were there when the doctors came and they said, his brain has stopped functioning. He is brain dead. What do you want for us to do? And they said, pull the plug. But before they said that, we saw them go to their mother and to their father, who were heartbroken and devastated, and presented to them Jesus Christ and led them to the Lord. The same with their brother and sister. And on that night, when Willie went home to be with Jesus, they led at least six people to the Lord Jesus Christ and gave them eternal life. What are you saying that for, Pastor? I'm saying that because devastating things happen in our lives that sometimes we think there's no way on God's earth that I'm going to get through this. And I'm going to tell you today, oh, yes, you can. Yes, yes you will. Yes. Christ, we do all things. Yes. You will make it. Yes. There is just an unexplainable way that God comes and gives you peace in the midst of that that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Yes. Amen. Amen. We can be devastated. Amen. But we will not be destroyed. We can be cast down, but we will not be forsaken. We have a God that loves us. And in the devastating times of our life, there is hope in Jesus Christ. He will see us through. We might be going through the hardest uh, battle of our lives this morning, right here and right now. I'm here to tell you this morning, God is telling you this is a message for you today. You will make it through. Amen. Amen. If you lose your heart, all the other things are just right for the picking. The, 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 for the picking, the swarming locust comes in, starts eating at the heart. This is devotion. This is why it's so important to maintain relationships with the Lord. Amen. When we start getting backing up and losing heart in the promises of God, I rest assure you, the problem is not on God's side, it's on our side. Amen. You need to hear this. <coughs> hear this well this morning. You must maintain a devotion life Amen. to Jesus Christ. Our relationship with God is just that. It's a relationship. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day for all of you husbands out there that need a reminder. <laughs> Depiction of relationship, a husband and wife. The, God's Word tells us, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. And really the connotation of that passage is that we have a relationship with Him. It's a relationship that must be maintained. And it's maintained through devotion. 
when we start getting beat up by the swarms of locusts that oppose our lives, that push on us and tell us we're no good, you're unsuccessful, you're not going to make it. And we start looking around and things don't seem to be going as well as we had planned. The first thing we need to look at is look at ourselves and say, how is my devotion life? Amen. When was the last time I opened up the Bible and let God speak to me? And when was the last time I got on my knees and I spoke to Him? There must be a maintaining of a devotion life, a relationship with God. When you have a strong relationship with God, you can rise up above the circumstance and situation. Job had lost everything that he owned. He lost his family. He lost his cattle. He lost his business. He lost his home. His friends said, why don't you just curse God and die? But Job had this testimony, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Why? How could Job say that? Because Job had a relationship with God that no matter what was going on around him, he would not be moved. I like saying it like this, that when he that is above you is in you, then the things that are around you will not move you. I'm talking about being able to overcome and move into that place where you make it through. Amen. You might be in a place of devastation this morning. But you are not destroyed. Amen. God says, I will restore. I'm going to bring it back around, full circle. The end of Job's story is a good one. Amen. Twice as much as before. Twice as much as before. Twice as much peace. Twice as much health. Twice as much love. Twice as much relationship. You put your situation in there today. I serve a God that I believe with all of my heart. We can ask of Him in faith. And He will do what we ask for in this morning. Oh, I'm feeling this today. Hallelujah. God says, I will restore to you. The years. That the locust is easy. God said, I will do it. You know what you need today? You need to be refreshed in Him. You need to be touched by Him. This message that, that Joel gave to the children of Israel is a message that came all the way down to the New Testament. Because as we've read through this and found the final few scriptures there, it says, And it shall come past afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon my sons and my daughters. We find that quoted in the book of Acts chapter 2. Yes. But Peter says, this is that yes. which was prophesied by Joel. Handing this promise down to you today, and to you today, to you today, and to me today, and the promises for you. God says, today I will restore to you Amen. those things that have been broken. Amen. I will restore to you those promises that have not been fulfilled yet. I will restore to you, my people. Amen. The blessing that I pronounced over your life. If you'll just let me. Stand your 